The mission of the Department of Bioengineering at Rice University is to excel at basic and translational research at the interface of biology and engineering. Additionally, we are training the next generation of leaders in our field. The Rice Bioengineering Department and the building here located across the street from the Texas Medical Center is a very vibrant place to do research. As a junior faculty member, it is really easy to start new collaborations both within the department as well as with people across the street. And there is literally an expert in every specialty and subspecialty of medicine. And patients in the Texas Medical Center, they have access to the latest innovation that is available in high resource settings. The department has three synergistic areas of research. The first is systems and synthetic biology. The second is regenerative medicine. And then the third area of research is in multi-scale optical imaging. This ties together both the nanomedicine and the systems biology areas. Uh, so I'm working in the field of tissue engineering and regenerative medicine. And uh, our field is trying to figure out what is the structure of human tissue and how can we build that in the lab. So we work in the area of synthetic biology, which is uh, applying engineering principles to living systems. And um, so we're trying to harness uh, the potential of living systems for various applications that benefit society. Our lab specializes in the biomaterials, both from the aspect of the chemistry and what the materials are made of and other properties that can be imparted to cells by the materials. We're trying to find repairs for heart defects, for birth defects. My research area is in the immune system. We think about how your immune system responds to vaccine or disease and then how can we influence that immune system. We use this information to help design vaccines. So I work in the field of synthetic virology. This is where we take naturally occurring viruses and reprogram their intrinsic properties to make them useful for human use. Our approach is to think about viruses as tiny biomolecular computers. And that's exactly what they are, because when they go into the human body, they actually detect complex combinations of biomolecular signals. I think it's really important in our field for students and faculty to think about how the innovations that they are trying to develop can be made accessible to everyone that needs to have them. So the way that we approach these challenges in our group is to begin by partnering with clinicians in low resource settings and to ask them what are the challenges that they face in delivering care and then try and turn those challenges into opportunities to design new technologies that can work in places where electricity might not be available all the time, where clean water might not be available all the time, and technologies that are affordable in those kinds of settings. In our field, we're looking at the long term, the idea that maybe you'd be able to take a sample of a patient's own cells, grow them up, and make a customized organ replacement for them made of their own cells, and that would prevent all kinds of immune rejection, all kinds of organ shortages that we have nowadays. And um, if you think about it also, uh, things like for children, if you can get an organ replacement from, for a young person that is made from their own cells, maybe it would grow with them as they age. In our work on the immune system, we've developed a measure to quantify how effective a vaccine will be. We term this measure P-epitope, and we use this to predict how effective a vaccine in one year will be. So if you get the vaccine, and then you're exposed to a virus that's a little bit different from the vaccine, will the vaccine work? So this is a very unique case where theory has led to an improved ability to predict the effectiveness of a therapy, in this case, the vaccine. And this is now used by health agencies all over the world. So we're very gratified that our research has now permeated throughout the world. So I think for the students and the faculty that are able to participate in these kinds of design and research projects, the benefit is really twofold. One is that they have the opportunity to see the impact of the work they do. And I think the other benefit is that it encourages engineers to think about the design of technologies in a, in a different way, in a way that is uh, more global in its perspective and more sensitive to the importance of thinking about cost from the beginning and thinking about accessibility from the beginning. And I think 
that, um, that has a benefit for our students that go on to pursue academic careers or that go on to pursue industrial careers. At the heart of all of this are the people. We are dedicated and focused in training the next generation of scientific and engineering leaders.